G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and each and every episode, we like to bring in what I call someone who's best in breed, someone that's at the top of their game and someone that can share their insights and their knowledge, and we're very fortunate to have them come along on the journey with us as well. If you don't know me by now, my name's Aaron. Like I mentioned, I run a mortgage broking business called Atelier Wealth, where we specialize in helping uh, driven Australian families start out and scale up their investment property portfolios. As part of building and scaling up, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, I guess the friction may come from the internal chatter. What that means is some people get inside their heads a little bit, maybe start to doubt themselves. And when they, when they had a plan to grow and scale, they now start to hit a few roadblocks, uh, whether that's mentally, maybe financially as well. The guest that we've got on today is someone's going to help you smash through those uh, mental barriers that you may have and help you hit those levels of performance that you're intending out when you started uh, to invest in property. We are very, very fortunate to have Keith Abraham join us. Welcome, Keith. Hey, Aaron. Great to be with you. Mate, I wanna, I'm not going to read your bio. I'm going to tell a little bit about uh, people because I've been very fortunate to see you uh, speak in person. If you haven't had the privilege of seeing Keith speak, you need to change that. Um, Keith is someone that uh, is not, I won't say it's not rara. It's someone that actually speaks to the heart um, of getting the best out of your performance. So harnessing your passion, achieving your goals and focus. And that's what's important, whether you're in business or whether you're in property. Uh, Keith has been really, uh, really uh, fortunate to discover the link between performance and people who are passionate about their lives as well. So this type of true alignment then kind of gives Keith the edge when he's talking to people. I know that Keith has been in this game for over 20 years, spoke at over well, 23 countries to clients to over 300 companies as well. So there's no shadow for doubt when Keith has been recognised as the keynote speaker of the year, he knows exactly what he's doing. G'day, Keith. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Very kind introduction, Aaron. It's great to be you know, on this podcast, uh, you know, I love what you're doing because you're helping people to, you know, not just take the next step, but to, to go to that, elevate themselves and then accelerate their success around their property and their finance and what they truly want to achieve. So hats off to you, mate, for, for taking the initiative to put together a podcast that helps people accelerate their achievement because, you know, like you, like me, I don't know, you know, I want to get from point A to point B faster, easier and sooner. Because if you can't get there faster, easier and sooner, what's the opposite of that? Slower, harder and sometimes never. And uh, I know that you're not, you know, that's not your style. So I'm um, to be with you and uh, to be able to share some insights and ideas today to help people, a little bit of inspiration, help people take the next step moving forward. Beautiful. Thanks very much, Keith. Uh, before we jump in, I'd like to get our guests to introduce themselves a little bit about yourself personally, professionally as well, and, and, and how your journey's kind of unfolded over the years, mate. Yeah, look, I've been doing this now for 25 years, um, spoken to 1.6 million people, written uh, five best-selling books published in 12 different languages. I'm big in Russia. Um, sold 25,000 books in a day in Russia, but it was during winter, so I think they might have been using it for firewood. So uh, don't hold that against hey, sales me. Sales are sales, aren't they? It doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter. So um, um, one of the, uh, so, you know, 25 years ago, started out as a professional speaker, as you said, keynote speaker of the year, educator of the year, yeah. CSP, never an award winner, all those types of things. However, what I really, you know, from a professional point of view, what I really love the most is that, you know, 94% of my clients use me a second time and 64% um, of my clients have used me more than um, six times and and 35% um, of my clients have used me every year for more than 10 years. So, wow. and my clients are the likes of the Toyotas and Lexus of the world, uh, the Mercer in UK, Gallagher Bassett, organisations, large corporates, um, TAL and and um, financial planning groups around, you know, around the country, around the world for that matter. So, um, yeah, that's professionally. From a personal point of view, I live in Brisbane, grew up on the Gold Coast, married to Christine. We celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary this year. We have two uh, daughters, 25 this year and, uh, and uh, 22 in about a month's time. Yeah. Uh, and um, they are, uh, you know, just great young women that we... Yeah, so proud to be the parents of. 
Um, and not not without their trials and tribulations. So I need to say that. So it hasn't been all. all so we just need to do a separate podcast about raising two girls, mate. Some of the other oh, wow, well, we are one yeah. years old. So I feel like <laughs> you've got this infinite wisdom on the professional side, but I think on the personal side, we need to have a beer. Um, yeah, yeah, a- absolutely, mate. Um, and um, uh, you know, I have a uh, you know a passion for golf and a passion for cricket. So I, I manage. Uh, uh, a first grade cricket side here in Brisbane, Turnbull, the mighty Turnbull Bulls. And, uh, and that's been just something I fell into about 12 months ago. And it's been a wonderful, it's been a wonderful journey. You know, the coach helps them become better cricketers and, and, uh, I work to help them become better men. And so that's, uh, you know, really, um, drives me along, uh, just that side of things. So, you know, um, yeah, that's that's probably a thumbnail for us, mate. Is is the podcast over yet? It was, you know. <laughs> hey, we've got plenty of gold to uncover. Um, <laughs> when I've seen you speak and you're electric on stage, mate, but there's one thing that you said that I'm like, I've just held on to that. And the comment was, when your why becomes clear, the how becomes easy. And when I'm yeah, talking yeah. to a lot of you know investors that have ambitions, they initially it starts out they've got the they've got the drive. And then they get stuck in the weeds about the how and the how, and then you can you can see that momentum just start to to wane a little bit. Can you just yeah. elaborate on how you've kind of been able to help people break through that barrier? Keith? Yeah. So so I've been a student of the goal setting process for the last thirty seven years, and early on in the piece, I realised that there was plenty of people writing down what goals and how goals, but they never ever took the time to think about the why goal. You know, why am I doing this? What because you know, at the end of the day, you know, when the why becomes clear, the how becomes easy. But if you don't have a big enough reason why, any excuse will do. Too hot, too cold, too many, too few, too little, too much, too hard, too easy. The market is up, the market is down, inflation is up, inflation is down. Um, you know, getting a loan is easy, getting a loan is hard. But if you have a big enough reason why. Now, here's what I can share with you is that <clears throat> from the research that we've done is that um, when you have an emotional, mental, and physical connection with your goal, which looks like why, what, how, feel, think, do, heart, head, hands, when you have those three elements, you become committed, compelled, and connected to that goal. Now, why do we need to be committed, compelled, and connected? Simple, so that you are prepared to go through and do the uncomfortable, the inconvenient, and the unknown. Nice. And so... As an adult, you can experience 135 different emotions. Of those 135 different emotions, 64 of them are positive. Of those 64, there are eight what I call goal drivers. It's the emotions, Aaron, that drive us. It's how we want to feel first before we really set a goal. So if you say to someone, what's your property goal? They they might say to you, I want to own three properties and I I want this to be my passive recurring revenue from from a rent roll, blah, blah, whatever it could be. Yeah. However, what you really want to ask them the question about is how do you want to feel financially? And some people will say they want to feel successful um, and 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 I can share definitions around these. Um, yeah. Some people want to feel purposeful. Some people want to feel inspired. Some people want to feel happy. Some people want to feel in, um, organized. Some people want to feel uh, respected. Some people want to feel confident. Some people want to feel relaxed. So they want to feel rela- you know, relaxed financially or they yeah. want to feel respected. They want to go, oh, that person knows what they're doing financially. And so what we've done is we've created a whole a different type of system around goal setting and the primary and foundation piece of that is getting people to understand what drives them what's their goal driver and um and happy to share with you, some of your listeners the, the and you know people watching this um a, a website they can go to and they can just take five minutes to fill in a little questionnaire and it pops out a six page report tells them right. Um, 12 insights on what's their actual goal driver, which is a really wonderful way then for them to go, okay, if I want to feel that way, then what's the financial goal I need to achieve, the property goal I need to achieve to make sure I'm feeling that way? Does that all make sense? I know it was a long explanation for a very short question. Not at all. That's what, that's exactly what we want because when you talk about those goal drivers, and I'd be very fortunate to check out your website and uh, and, and see your resources as well. And that to me was a real turning point when I actually looked under the hood 
And I feel like you you need to come face to face. Like it's a real deep, hard look in the mirror about what am I doing? But most importantly, why am I doing this? And is it yeah. going to get me closer to my goals as well, right? So yeah, I feel like vanity metrics, like having X number of properties or earning this X number, you find that people just are so become, I guess, disjointed with that outcome. That's not really why they're connected to that goal. Well, and it's easy to miss those vanity goals and then to feel that you're a failure. Mm. And and so, and to be disheartened and disillusioned and for doubt to creep in it. And here's what we do know. Doubt sees the darkest night, certainty sees the light of day. Doubt asked who believed and certainty answered I. So if you've got this whole position around doubt and certainty, how do you gain certainty? Clarity. Because mm. with clarity comes certainty. With certainty comes confidence. With confidence comes consistency. And, and so, you know, one of the things I say to people, you know, the, the whole goal of when I'm working with people is generating momentum because momentum defeats doubt. Thank you very much, Keith. There's, and when you talked about your resources, tell us a little bit more because I, I've been, yeah. really, again, I, I speak very freely from experience, having seen uh, experience you speak. And one of the, again, one of the big turning points was doing what you call your Lifetime 100. So that's, yeah. again, yeah. One, of the, one of the many tools and resources that you've got. Um, yeah. That again, just kind of unpacked, okay, what am I doing and how am I doing it? And what do I actually want to achieve in my life? It's almost like a like a bucket list as well, right? Yeah, 100% it is. And uh, so one of the, if you go to Keith Abraham, I want to give two websites yep. um, and I'll give some people. So if you go to keithabraham.com uh, forward slash resources, um, there's a few things there. Firstly, um, log, you know, get my blog, you know, go, go to the blog, sign up for the blog. I do a video. Uh, blog every week been doing that for the last you know I don't know 10 years now it's been in the written or video yeah um, and so so I, I'd recommend for people to do that and the second thing that I do is go to the resources page and you mentioned um, identifying the hundred goals you want to achieve in your lifetime yeah and uh, people go oh, I can never do that no 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 and I don't say this arrogantly Aaron because you've seen me present yeah. um, I can get anyone to a hundred goals why because if I can ask you 25 questions It'll stimulate enough answers to get yourself to 100. Now, I'm a realist around this. Some of the questions you'll write down nothing. In other, que uh, in mm. other questions, you'll write down 20 things and you will get yourself to 100. Um, now, the other website that I'd recommend people to go to and is, is to this one, I'm going to flash it up on screen, is mygoaldriver.com. This is, so, so I mentioned nine years of research. Nine years of research into how to accelerate people's performance, how to remove the roadblocks, how, what drives them, what's people's basic desires. And so you go and answer 10 sets of questions, takes about five minutes. And at the end of it comes out a six page report free. And yeah. it's called Gold Driver Snapshot. And, it, and it, if, I can, if I can do this, mate, it, it looks a little bit like this report here. It won't be obviously you know, printed out in A3, but it'll tell you what your gold driver is. It'll then tell you 12 insights. Now that people can see this really well, but it'll tell you what your goal driver is, what your avatar is around goal setting, um, what you're driven to become, what you desire to become, how others describe you, what's your uh, greater, you know, what's you, you know, what uh, what you like most like, what's the best mindset for you? There are eight mindsets. Greatest fear, what happens when you get frustrated, what you need to stop stop doing, what you like to do, how to remove the roadblocks. And so when you log on and do that, you get an insight into what drives you. And the beautiful part about the, 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 uh, the My Gold Driver is um, there's five different sections there so people can do it for financial, they can do it for their health and well-being, they can do it for their personal goals, and professional goals, they can do it for, um, for, their, you know, um, uh, for their career, whatever it might be. So, yeah, so they're the two best resources for people to access and they're free, very expensive. They're free. Yeah, the challenge sometimes with free is that people, not that people don't value it enough, it's like there's a free resource and I'll get to it later, whereas yeah. uh, you know, the action takers, we always speak very openly about action takers. Yeah. You know, we'll put the links uh, for Keith's websites there as well into the show notes. Um, but like any high performer or any driven performer, uh, is going to take action, get onto it yeah. straight away, and then and then take time, grab a coffee, grab a wine, 
read through that report and kind of digest it and let it sink in a little bit. Because I think when I've revisited it, I'm like, yeah. And sometimes it's a place in your life where you are at that stage. And that can, yeah. that can kind of turn a little bit depending on your, your life cycle as well, well, right? Well, you know, here's what I say, Aaron, is that I don't know about anybody else, but I want an, un- I want an unfair competitive advantage mm. over myself. You know, like I'm the person that gets in my way the most. It's mm. not life and circumstances and situations and people and government and elections and COVID and anything else you want to whack in there. It's not that. It's me. Mm. I love the quote from Sid Hillary. He said, it's not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Mm. And so what happens with when people get hold of their goal driver is a um, snapshot, at least, is they get an insight into what's slowing them down, what speeds them up, what helps them become the best version of them, not the second best version of somebody else. Now, the snapshot is free, six pages. Yeah. Um, they, they can click on a green button and get the full report, which is $87, 46 pages, is 135 different insights, 24 performance accelerators, um, 36 different uh, components that can help them accelerate their performance, but also to really understand, you know, what drives them to become that best version of them, but not only themselves, but the best. For, but for the people who mean the world to them. So, Actually, but, valuable, yeah. mate. Well done. Well built. Congratulations. Thank you. Going back to one point, you just, when you were on your role there as well, and you talked about uh, people getting their own way. So you might call it self-sabotage. You might call it self-imposed yeah. roadblocks, for example. Yeah. How does someone overcome that uh, hurdle? for example, as well. Yeah, it, it, firstly, it's the internal language that we have. It's all the past programming of what a, a teacher said to us, a parent said to us, a, you know, one of our first bosses, you know. It's all that program that we have to remove, which means there's a few things there that is really important um, that will shift our mindset. Firstly, people get frustrated the most when they don't feel like they're making progress. So if you're not feeling like you're making progress, then the goal is to make progress every day. How do you do that? Have daily rituals. People create rituals and rituals form futures. So this is important that people get the um, the rituals that will generate how they want to feel. So if, let's say you want to feel successful. Okay, great. What do you have to do every day for you to feel successful? Well, I need to tick off the three things I want to achieve. I need to make sure I take my vitamins. I need to to go for a 3K walk or a 10K walk. Uh, I need to go to the gym. I, I need to, um, whatever, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. So so that's important. Now, the second piece, and, and let me, if it's okay, let me, so here's the real secret here, Aaron, is that there is internal language that we have to diminish. And see what happens is most people are doing this. Their internal language is this, am I, am I good enough, worthy, deserving, capable, smart enough? Um, Do I have enough um, drive? You know, am I, um, am I a good leader? Am I good with my money? You see, what happens when we, our internal language is always referencing this we are constantly questioning our ability. And when you constantly question your ability, you diminish your belief. Mm. Now, what's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is this, I am. I'm not saying you're saying this out aloud. You don't want to sound like a tosser. You want to what's saying, this is your internal language. I am worthy. I am deserving. I am capable. I am good enough. I, I am smart enough. I am good with my money. And when you are using that type of language, you are affirming. And what does that do? That enhances your belief. But what tends to happen for most people, Aaron, is they get stuck in this loop here mm. and they diminish their belief. They diminish their self-confidence and they get in their own way mentally so if someone's stuck there keith and, and, and that may resonate they're going yeah i can see myself caught in that loop i can that the story that i'm telling myself with this internal chatter for example they're hearing you what's something and you mentioned there can you can have a couple of anchors that are your success habits for the day what are some other yeah. tips or, or insights that you may have for someone that's maybe caught in that 
just caught in that whirlwind at the moment, do you think? Yeah, well, you got to you got to do those things around your own development. So, listening to podcasts like yours, um, it's reading personal, professional development books. So, whether it be informative or inspirational, you need to be able to do that. You need to have good mentors around you, mate. I'm yeah. very blessed that I've got wonderful, wonderful mentors, and every time my business has grown, it's because I've got good mentors around me. And mm. every time that it, it it goes off the rails or plateaus. It's because I think I know it all, uh, you know. So <laughs> you've got to humble yourself enough to sit at the feet of a master and say, "Show me, teach me, help me." Yeah, fantastic. Uh, because they what mentors give you is perspective. So uh, reading, um, listening, watching. Um, the other piece of the puzzle around this is the internal dialogue, catching yourself in that loop of "am I" versus "I am," um, and as I said before, evidence of progress. You know, when you are creating momentum, doubt diminishes. You defeat doubt. So you're not doubting yourself anymore because when you've got momentum, if there is a roadblock in front of you, you, you either, when you've got momentum, you either go over it, you go around it, or you go through it to get what you want. When you are stationary, in other words, you're pontificating, procrastinating, you know, you're overthinking it, um, you are not moving forward and hence doubt creeps in um, so much quicker and, and is strengthened by the amount of time that you are um, stuck, stale and stagnant at that time. Yeah. You've, you've touched on a great point. I, I want to finish with this question, which is um, it's the people that you surround yourself with because you mentioned, okay, you can start to accelerate, you can start to you know, fill, your, uh, fill your, your cup up with great knowledge great insights um, yeah. and, and really motivate yourself to drive yourself forward. But sometimes it's also the company you keep. And I'll give the context of, say, a property investor. Oh, I should be buying. They're like, this is not a great time. And it's all this noise that kind of comes at you from the people around you. And, and sometimes you value their opinion because it might be a, a friend, a parent, uh, uh, a close colleague, for example, someone that you look up to and they're going, they're getting in your head a little bit. So how do you, how do you shut out that noise? Because you, you love them. But you, you're running your own race. So how do you, how does yeah. that Yeah, oh, You know, the thing there is, look, most people who are giving you advice are doing it from a full heart. Yeah. The, the challenge is that they're not coming from a, a level of expertise or experience. Um, so they, they, they're doing, you know, with the right intention. You know, you get advice from, let's say, Uncle Larry. You know, Uncle Larry bought a, you know, bought a property, you know, 30 years ago because he got an inheritance and and now he's the greatest property investor known since <laughs> mankind. Oh, you know, that property, I bought it for, you know, 100,000, it's now, put, you know, 1.1 million. Well, Larry, Blind Freddy could have done that, you know, and, and all of a sudden they think they're a guru in the property market. Yeah. I, I think you've always got to say, you know, you always got to say either verbally or internally, thanks for sharing, mm. um, and and go, but you know, but I've got someone who is an expert, an authority. Whoever you listen to has got to be that authority, that expert, and is spending the time, the energy on a, on a consistent, regular, full time basis. That's what you're looking for. Well, and it doesn't matter if you're, it doesn't matter if you're, um, I don't know, trying to be a professional cricketer. I've got a few guys that I mentor around that. Yeah. Um, not that I've been a professional cricketer. I don't talk to them about cricket. I just talk to them about this six inches here. I just talk to them about the real estate upstairs. They've got great coaches who are first-class cricketers that are coaching them on their that skills is. or like whatever. And I think this is, I think that's the challenge in the marketplace is there is so much content out there and you've got so many, you know, I even look in my own industry. You know, I think it's, I think it's, it's actually very uh, relevant because sometimes you are their product. So instead of the knowledge being their product, it's like they're selling to you. And that's, that's I mean, we see that in the property space very often. There's oh. there's spruikers or there's real good property mentors or advocates as well versus you're, you're going into their sales funnel versus they actually want your your success is their success, really. Yeah. 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 You know, you just, with anybody, you just got to always do your research. You know, how many properties they got? You know, I don't have any. Oh, wow. And you're teaching people about property. Wow. Oh, wow. mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. That's so, yeah. Keith, thank you very much. You've been not only generous with your time, but your energy and also your insights. And I want to say 
from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you very much because I know this episode, while it's not, and this is a challenge as well, it's not properly specific, this is the, this is the area that a lot of investors need to kind of invest more in. The yeah. property will take care of itself. The property will, will grow and appreciate. It's your knowledge, it's your insights, it's your self-confidence and self-awareness. That's the long game and that's the, that's the way the capital growth really is. It's in yourself because you are that yeah. capital. Yeah. And, and, and you're always the vehicle, mate. You know, mm. at the end of the day, you know, the market can come up, the market can come down, but you're the vehicle, you know. So, yeah. you, you know, what you do. I love that quote, Aaron. Uh, you know, if you don't invest time, energy and money in yourself, you're a poor judge of a good investment. Yeah, well said. And, 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 you know, because if you don't do it, who's going to do it? And, um, you know, the speed of, you know, the quote from Leo Coker was the speed of your business is, uh, sorry, the speed of the business is the speed of its leaders. Yes. And I think you take that with life. You know, the speed of your life is the speed of you. If you're changing, developing, um, your life changes and develops at the at a at a faster pace as well. Mm-hmm. Well said. Keith, it's been fantastic. I'm gonna walk away on a high from this and I hope our listeners will too. So um if people want to reach out to yourself, Keith, we mentioned you you've got your website there, uh, yeah. keithabraham.com forward slash resources. We'll make sure we include all the links. People can follow you on their social as well. Kind of keep keep filling up their cup with all the good stuff that you're putting out, the blogs that you mentioned as well, and be able to follow those resources and access it as well. So I want to say thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, I know you give abundantly and you get, you'll get back abundantly as well for what you're putting out. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Aaron, for the opportunity. All the best, buddy. Thanks, mate. That's a wrap for another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. If you found that helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, like, or give us a comment. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks very much.